here we go again. Minecraft Kids content is among some of the most popular and profitable niches on the YouTube platform, and has been ever since the game came out. It's what I, and probably you if you're watching this video, consumed in some capacity growing up. However, somewhere along the way, things changed and what once was a community filled with wholesome YouTubers, mostly, who made their content with good morals and intentions in mind, has now been almost completely overrun by selfish vultures who abuse this niche daily, spitting out low-effort, mind-numbing slop content that constantly exposes their viewers to all sorts of shocking, violent, and sexually suggestive imagery for a few extra clicks. All of this was covered in my previous video on the subject. However, what I didn't mention was that I left a lot of things out in that video. Disgusting, harrowing things that probably would have gotten my channel completely demonetized. But after seeing the overwhelming support for my last video and the infinite amount of people commenting their personal, horrifying stories with this content, I feel obligated to get to the bottom of this rabbit hole. A rabbit hole worse than you and I could have ever imagined. But first, allow me to introduce today's sponsor, Opera GX. It's no secret that my videos, including this one, take hundreds of hours of editing to produce. And in order to keep me entertained while editing, I like to watch a lot of YouTube videos on my second monitor. Probably like how you're watching this video right now. <laughs> Don't think I don't see you. But for the longest time, I had a major problem in which my old browser was taking up so much RAM to show these videos, where it would often literally crash my computer. However, after switching to Opera GX and using features such as GX Control, which allows you to limit how much RAM and CPU your tabs can use, I've been able to edit for hours and watch my boy Sam Sulek in peace with no issues. Now I know what you're thinking. Caleb, I've already heard of Opera GX and I know that they have other amazing features such as a built-in VPN and ad blocker and force dark mode that works on any page. But did you know that Opera GX now literally has infinite customization? This is thanks to their new feature, GX Mods, where in just a few simple clicks, you can access and download any of the thousands of pre-made mods that are available in their store, allowing you to change things like your wallpaper, background music, and keyboard and browser sounds to a theme that maybe represents your favorite game, or have everything be a metal pipe. For some reason. <laughs> the choice is yours, and it's as simple as clicking this mods tab here and searching the mod store for the one you prefer. My favorite recently has got to be this Minecraft fireplace, which honestly brings such a cozy vibe, perfect for accompanying my late night gaming or editing sessions. But probably the best part about GX mods is that you can mix and match them, like I did here when I downloaded this lavender purple key switches mod to change all of my typing noises to sound like this. Which is just so satisfying, I could honestly listen to it all day. And if that's not enough for you, Opera GX has so many more helpful features, like their own version of ChatGPT, built into the sidebar, so if you ever need help with some homework, research, or in my case, some inspiration for editing, this thing's got your back. Not to mention, all of your bookmarks and extensions can just port right over. So why not try it out today? Download Opera GX for completely free right now and support the channel by going to operagx.gg slash calebassalty2 or simply click the link in the description. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video, and now it's time to go down the rabbit hole. Alright guys, you ready to have the scariest night of our lives? Yeah, yeah, I am! Alrighty, let's figure out where to go first. The video you just watched is from a channel called Afmao. Afmao is one of the many content creators on this platform who makes Minecraft videos specifically cater towards a very young audience. Upon first glance, this content might seem pretty cringeworthy, and that's because it is. I was originally going to make this comparison to the Minecraft YouTubers I watched growing up, but honestly, especially compared to them, this content is very hard to watch. But despite this, there's still one reason all of these channels, old and new, have stuck to and continue to churn out family-friendly oriented Minecraft content, money. While you and I may never watch an AFMAO video in our lives, there is clearly a massive younger audience for it, not necessarily on YouTube, but rather its subsidiary app, YouTube Kids. 
In a census done back in 2021, the United States government discovered that around 75% of households with children under the age of 5 owned some sort of tablet for their kids. And in 2023, it was reported that YouTube kids had over 600 million individual downloads, with that number growing exponentially each year. Unfortunately, it's becoming increasingly common nowadays for newer parents to rely on apps like this as a way to keep their child entertained without having to put in any actual effort, letting them sit and watch hours of content unsupervised under the guise that it's a completely safe way for them to consume content. And the result? Channels like Aphmau earning almost half a billion views in millions of dollars each month. Fortunately for us, Aphmau is one of the better examples out of this whole niche. She does things by the books, and aside from it being a little cringy, their content is educational, suitable, and safe for kids. Aphmau's school, on the other hand, is absolutely unacceptable. They too make Minecraft-related videos targeted towards children, however the methods in which they gain their views are a little different. Instead of building a reliable and trustworthy brand that both parents and the young viewers who watch can trust, they resort to imitating an already well-known and trustworthy family-friendly content creator and uploading content that uses their original characters in all sorts of sexually suggestive or straight-up violent ways for shock value in order to get more clicks. This manipulative strategy strategy tricks the YouTube algorithm into recommending them alongside videos of the real content creator they're impersonating, sometimes resulting in these fake videos gaining millions more views than the original. I mean, this channel alone has made roughly over $100,000 in just a short year and a half they've been posting content. They also have 118,000 subscribers, which is more than me, so uh, please subscribe. <laughs> and of course, Athmau School is just one small example of the many perpetrators who make money this way. Pretty much every Minecraft kids YouTuber you can think of has one, if not multiple, of these garbage-filled impersonation channels made using their brand, all of which are individually made with the sole purpose of generating insane amounts of money, inadvertently exposing a plethora of disgusting and inappropriate themes in their content to millions of unexpecting children. Included, but not limited to... Take off the foo -foo. take off the couch, take off the wi -Fi. Take off the money phone, take off the car loan, take off the flex and the white loss. Take off the weird ass drug, I'ma take his steps, then I'm taking off top five. Take off the fabricated streams and the microwave memes, it's a real world outcome. But well, it's okay, I have a gun! We just tied you to the bed. Just don't shout and everything will be fine. We're going to the girl's house. We knock them out and then tie them to the bed. We take scissors and cut their clothes. But like I said, I've already discussed this before in my previous video. However, what I was very stupid to neglect at the time was that long-form video isn't the only form of media a person can consume on this platform, with the other obviously being YouTube Shorts, to which I've come to learn not only has all of the same problems, but for a myriad of reasons, is actually so much worse. By doing as little as searching up Minecraft in the YouTube search bar, we can find a plethora of different channels posting these quote-unquote Minecraft animations in the Shorts tab, all with preview images that that, if left uncensored, would probably get this video demonetized, and all with tens, sometimes hundreds of millions of views each. The main difference between anything I've talked about in the past and these quote-unquote Minecraft animation shorts is the way in which the content gets recommended to viewers. As mentioned previously, the most common strategy for these fake quote-unquote family-friendly channels to lure in new viewers is to create the most shocking and attention-grabbing title and thumbnail they can, whether that be by using gruesome, violent, or sexually suggestive imagery, in order to stand out in the viewer's recommendation feed in comparison to other videos, subsequently resulting in more clicks, more views, and more money. After all, that's the only reason they even exist in the first place. However, YouTube shorts work a little differently. Since YouTube limits their shorts to a maximum length of only 60 seconds, as well as having no support for custom thumbnails, these channels instead lure the the viewers in with the actual content of the video. And yeah, very quickly it becomes apparent that these quote-unquote animations are just straight softcore 
photography, using Minecraft to mask itself as family-friendly content to bypass the YouTube Kids algorithm to get, like I said, tens, sometimes hundreds of millions of views each. Not to mention the fact that these channels specifically abuse the system and take advantage of the way YouTube Shorts are set up. Everyone knows that YouTube Shorts has this sort of doom scroll slash infinite scroll interface, where instead of giving the viewer a bunch of random recommendations and then allowing them to specifically choose what kind of content they want to consume, the app practically just shoves a bunch of random videos in the viewer's face without a choice, and no matter how much they might not be interested, they will always watch at least a small portion of it before scrolling away. Channels like 11.3 know this, and that's why they made sure to put Minecraft characters that look like this in the very first second of each video. It's not even like they're trying to hide it. This channel, Alex and Steve Animation, which has 5.3 million subscribers and over 1.6 billion views, not only does the exact same thing, but they also have a direct link to a Patreon account that creates fully NSFW drawings and videos accessible by anybody with just one click. The craziest thing is, this isn't even the first time someone's spoken out about these issues. A handful of creators have already made similar videos, both calling out YouTube on this massive problem, as well as encouraging their audience to mass report any bad channels they've mentioned. But every time, YouTube manually demonetizes and shadow bans the video and the algorithm specifically for showcasing clips of all the nasty things these channels upload. In fact, friend of the channel and fellow YouTuber the Mr. Epic uploaded two separate videos calling out these channels to YouTube, while taking the extra step to manually blur and censor anything that might be considered non-advertiser friendly. Yet still, despite his best efforts, both videos would get demonetized. All the while, the original content that was being used in his video, and all of the channels related to it are not only still active, but continue to remain fully monetized as well. So basically, I'm just wondering what happened with those two videos that got demonetized. Can you kind of explain the situation around that? First one, which I uploaded last year, that one was demonetized after about, I think, two days. Interestingly, what happened was, rather than the video just outright being, like, uh, stop being pushed and stop being showed, it actually, like, did this weird thing I haven't seen before where it, like, intentionally blurred the thumbnail. I hadn't seen that happen before, but I was like, oh, oh well, that sucks. The second video I then uploaded, which was only a few months ago now, I was a lot more careful. Like, I went out of my way to censor it even more. Interestingly, this time I actually got more information because uh, I had, like, a partner manager who I got around the time and uh, he gave me an update saying that basically it was the thumbnail once again despite me obviously censoring it more than the original thumbnails but also this one two second clip of like I don't even know what characters they are they're like some weird like kids characters in like a somewhat provocative looking position from another YouTube video mind you yeah. and uh, that was basically it and uh, this was after a human reviewer plus my partner manager pushing to get it um, unage restricted and, and they nothing could change so yeah and at this point you may be wondering why why would youtube despite obviously having the resources and ability to do so still not take any action to fix this glaring issue with youtube and youtube kids but at the same time actively silence anyone who decides to speak out and make a video about it well we can't be certain but my personal theory is that youtube has been aware of it the whole time I mean, think about it. These channels generate billions of views and, by proxy, an unfathomable amount of money. This revenue is generated entirely from the money advertisers pay to have their ads displayed on these videos, which honestly can be a problem in itself. I'm sure Apple would be just delighted to know that their ad is getting placed on a video and where a popular children's character gets buried alive. Like, what? YouTube splits this ad revenue with the creator, giving 55% of the share to them and keeping 45% for themselves. Once you start to factor in the hundreds of other channels uploading the same inappropriate content that simply haven't been documented yet, most likely thousands if we include the accounts outside of the Minecraft niche posting the same, if not even worse content with other well-known characters, you can start to paint the picture of why YouTube theoretically might want to turn a blind eye. It makes up a small but notable chunk of their revenue each year. In YouTube's eyes, throwing all morals, ethics, and damage this content is inflicting on the millions of children who use this platform every single day, getting rid of it means that YouTube would be passing up a significant amount of money, and we all know they would never do that. YouTube ads are getting worse, so YouTube is testing server-side 
ads on YouTube. Which means that instead of using an ad blocker on YouTube to bypass the annoying ad that you get, uh, you're going to be forced to watch it. So instead, they decided to take the much easier route of ignoring the problem for as long as possible, knowing they have plausible deniability because they could just blame their algorithm or something like that. Oh, we had no idea this was such a big problem, it's just an issue with our algorithm. And quietly rake in massive amounts of money while simultaneously silencing individual creators who make videos attempting to expose and raise awareness about this issue because unfortunately we are a much smaller and easier target to deal with if my if my videos which are in, like more censored than the ones online are getting flagged and the human reviewer is saying that hey this is not appropriate we can't have this and how are like complete full channels allowed to exist right like they need to fix their human review system and either allow my content or they need to block other content that i'm i've increasingly censored right like it can't be this weird middle ground where somehow my videos are being censored yet the other ones are not. In my previous video, I touched on the proven and lasting side effects that watching this content from such a young age can do to an individual in the long term. Multiple studies have proven that children's ages 0 to 8, the primary target of both YouTube kids and these channels, are in the most formative years of their life. Everything they do, learn, and consume in these years play a huge part into shaping the type of person they'll be for the rest of their lives. This is why traditional kids programming such as PBS Kids always ends with a positive, educational, and age-appropriate lesson being learned. It's because all shows on the network are specifically designed to support a child's development in these crucial years and promote healthy, positive behavior as seen in their official educational guidelines. But you know what platform isn't properly regulated and is quickly becoming more popular than traditional programming, YouTube and YouTube Kids. Studies show that children exposed to violent and suggestive media at such a young age can develop lasting trauma and create serious damage to the development of the brain. And that's exactly what's reflected in the comments of my last video. Ever since I was 9, I've been exposed to sexual content on YouTube, and ever since then, my life has gotten a lot worse. I keep getting random headaches and can't focus on one thing for more than 60 minutes at a time. I've also had a lot of memory losses due to this content and have sadly developed an addiction. Not me, but my friend used to watch these videos. He developed a severe addiction. It took him months to stop. When I was little, a bunch of these Minecraft and LCG videos popped up, and from then, for eight years, I have I am one who is exposed to this. This it's is an extremely yeah. big problem. I won't say how this this is really not. effective. Yeah. Messes with the mind. Bro, I used to watch this too, and it's given me horrible trauma and got me addicted to I just turned 18 a week ago, and YouTube back in 2016, 2017 messed me up in such a big way. I struggled with so much depression and being exposed to so much vile content ruined my perception on myself and how I act subconsciously. And I've lost a lot of my most important years and lessons where I should have been properly taught about that stuff when I was ready. In their official blog post from February 2021, YouTube announced that the YouTube Kids app had over 35 million weekly users. Since then, the app has almost doubled its total number of downloads. So if we do a little bit of math here, accounting for both of these numbers and other things like trends and higher user engagement, this means that every day, the estimated 70 to 80 million users of this platform have a good chance of being exposed to these kinds of videos and then having to deal with the life-altering, long-lasting effects as a result. Result. At first glance, people might point the blame at the individuals running these disgusting channels, and while they are definitely at fault here, I believe it's actually YouTube that should be held the most responsible. On any social media platform, there will always be malicious people looking to exploit the system for their own personal gain. However, as long as the platform is aware of this and actively tries to fix and prevent those exploits from happening, then the situation can be managed effectively. However, YouTube hasn't exactly had the best track record of doing that. In 2017, parents began to complain that strange videos were popping up on YouTube Kids. So lately, every time I go on YouTube, there's these really strange videos showing up on my trending page. I mean, they seem to be aimed at young kids, but they're super creepy and disturbing. These videos almost always use what are otherwise household family-friendly characters such as Spider-Man and Elsa, 
doing a variety of blatantly inappropriate or disturbing things, but tagged in such a way as to circumvent YouTube's child safety algorithms and appear on the homepage of YouTube Kids. This phenomenon would not go unnoticed, as more and more of these channels began to pop up, all with hundreds of millions of views each. The number of concerned parents complaining and demanding a fix from YouTube began to significantly increase, and eventually, this disturbing trend would catch the attention of major news outlets who would also begin to raise their alarm bells via a bunch of extremely well-written articles. If you ever let your child watch YouTube videos, we have got a warning for you. Some people are creating disturbing cartoons, making them appear kid-friendly, only to get your children to watch inappropriate content. That's our consumer. All covering an event commonly referred to as Elsagate. Yet despite receiving mainstream attention, mass reports, and millions of individual complaints, YouTube did almost nothing to fix the situation. Until November 27th of that year, when in a BuzzFeed article, YouTube finally announced they were cracking down on the problem, removing over 150,000 of these inappropriate videos and demonetizing over 2 million more. Please note that this announcement, while positive and overall a pretty big win for the platform, just so happened to occur only three days after a bunch of major brands and advertisers had pulled out due to the entire scandal. YouTube, years later, would also get fined $170 million by the FTC, partially for having such a glaring issue with their quote unquote, kids content and child safety rules. As a result of this, YouTube would also update their guidelines to ban any inappropriate use of quote, family entertainment characters, and also implement a brand new labeling system, forcing creators to decide whether or not their videos are made for kids. If a video is determined to be made for kids, it will lose a majority of features that normal videos have, such as the comment section, and most importantly, personalized ads and a majority of ad revenue. But if that's the case, then how are these channels, which are clearly targeted towards children, still able to make so much money? And the answer is about as simple as it is aggravating. To be honest, it really doesn't matter what option the creator chooses, as both types of content, even ones specifically marked as not for kids, actively get recommended through the YouTube Kids app, as long as the video looks family friendly enough in the eyes of the algorithm by loading up the thumbnail with a bunch of bright colors and swapping out any potentially dangerous words like rape with prank or with love curse, it will get recommended just the same. And there's a really easy way to prove this that you can do yourself. Just go to literally any of the channels I've mentioned so far, click on a random video, and take a look at the engagement on the actual video. For example, this video has 213,000 views, yet only 1,100 likes and only 40 comments. This is because when you watch a video on YouTube Kids, it doesn't have any of the extra buttons or features. It only allows you to watch the video. But since the video is still coming from YouTube, it still counts as a view. And the only engagement that's actually getting left on the video is from other kids using the regular YouTube app, probably using their parents' account. And yeah, it's pretty easy to tell by the quality of the comments here. Kind of funny how even though YouTube implemented these supposed changes to make the platform safer, it appears it's now easier than ever to run one of these content farms. Due to its simple editing style, low production costs, hell, even the recent developments in AI technology, specifically for voice lines and text-to-speech, it's no problem for a single person with no moral compass and enough free time to start operating a network of these channels, pumping out dozens of these videos a week, all while facing absolutely zero public repercussion or backlash and remaining completely anonymous. In other words, it's the perfect crime. But let's take a step back for a moment and explore a rather outlandish question. What if the owner actually wants to be found? This is Neil. For the sake of anonymity, that's obviously not his real name. But as you can probably guess by now, Neil makes a living by owning and operating one of these Minecraft kids' content farms. However, for many reasons we'll dive into shortly, they might just be the worst of the worst. Because it's one thing to upload this disgusting content with the goal of monetary gain. But what's even more worrying and truly vile is owning channels like these than trying to communicate with your audience and lure them off the site. Earlier this year, on January 26th, a YouTuber named The Beak uploaded a video showcasing his discovery of a very strange set of channels which impersonate characters from the Amazing Digital Circus. 
a very popular children's animated series on YouTube, which, for whatever reason, has absolutely taken off and garnered over half a billion views in just the first two full-length episodes. In other words, it's just another example of these channels exploiting familiar and trusted family-friendly characters for views and tricking children into watching content that is all but family-friendly. Let's take a quick look at what Neil thinks is acceptable to post. Every single thumbnail, every single video on all of these channels completely violate YouTube's content guidelines. However, this isn't even the weirdest part. In his video, The Beak discovered that both of these channels advertised a link which invited anybody who clicked on it the ability to directly message Neil on Telegram, a messaging platform infamous for its overwhelming focus on privacy, with messages sent over there having end-to-end -end encryption and being, for the most part, completely untraceable. Yet, sometime after The Beak's video was posted, the owner suddenly removed these telegram links and changed the contact email for both of the Pomni and Jack's channels. Interesting. Now I'm not trying to assume the worst here, but I really can't find a reasonable explanation as to why an owner of multiple channels which make over-sexualized Minecraft content targeted towards very young children would ever need to include a direct messaging feature in their about me section, and more importantly, why would they feel the need to delete the telegram link almost immediately after being exposed about it. While assumptions can be made, we may never truly know the answer. I was still pretty curious about this Neil guy though, so I did a bit more digging around. Eventually, I had the idea to paste the channel's original email address into the YouTube search bar, which brought me to a whole bunch more of these channels that he owned, impersonating even more YouTubers like Afmau and Mizen. Then I decided to try the same tactic with this new email, and found yet another impersonation channel he owned which contains another sketchy link this time leading to a Kofi page that sells NSFW content of their characters, which, of course, comes with another direct messaging feature. And just to confirm that despite all the changes, these channels are still owned by the same person. They both use the exact same AI text-to-speech voices and music in their videos. Pomni, please, lather up with the washcloth and also this part of my back. Okay, Jax, but you're already very clean! You have no idea how long I've been waiting for this. Jump onto my bed and strip off all your clothes! The thumbnails all have the exact same, very specific art style style, as if, you know, they were commissioned by the same artist. The titles are all very similar, often using the same set of keywords across all channels, like what is he planning, and what is he up to. Also, all of the channels were created roughly around the same time in mid to late 2023. It's a common theme for all of these YouTube automation people and content farms to start all of their channels at once, and that's exactly what happened here, with the Jax and Hasman Hotel channel even being created on the same day. And most importantly, the NSFW Kofi page has perks listed in Russian writing, which just so happens to be the exact same language Neil's real first name is displayed on his old Telegram link. Inappropriate imitation channels, wildly obscene thumbnails, abhorrent YouTube shorts, weird content farm owners that advertise NSFW Patreons and direct messaging features, the long repeated negligence of YouTube, and the result of it all, the potential danger and long lasting mental health issues of millions of children around the world. This is the Minecraft Kids content rabbit hole. Yet one unanswered question remains. What does the end game of this issue look like? Will it ever reach a boiling point? Will YouTube ever step in? And how do we fix this? Well, I think either A, that uh, too many of the people making the videos will end up getting falsely flagged or demonetized, and then they just stop making the videos because they can't make money from it anymore. Or B, it somehow gets like significant media attention to the point where they actually decide to take action. Because I feel like right now, no, no one really knows about this stuff or really cares, right? You never hear about it. So I think those are the two options. I don't think anything's really gonna change because I, don't, I feel like they don't have any reason to change anything, right? And there it is. YouTube, at this current moment, throwing all morals and ethics aside, has no reason to change or fix this issue. Not exactly the resolution you and I were probably hoping for, but unfortunately, 
It's the honest truth. If you're somehow a parent or sibling of someone who might be at risk of this content, my best advice would be to simply monitor what they're watching online. And if that's too hard, just delete the app entirely and let them watch like Arthur or something, I don't know. And lastly, thank you for watching.